Welcome to Pattern and Rhythm. This is going to be quick. You'll be glad to know. Pattern, you use something and repeat it visually over and over in a structured manner. Even if it's an irregular structure, it's still something we can expect structurally. It's used for decoration. It's used for creating a bouncing uh, movement, contrast, all kinds of things. Okay. Rhythm is a little bit more subtle, but more universally used, believe it or not. Okay, let's take a look at what they look like in art. Oh, and one more, randomness. That's the last element that we're going to be discussing with this group here. Randomness does not mean weird. Oh, that's just a random. That's what most people use it today, just common words. That doesn't mean that here. In this class, randomness means what it really means. Out of the control of the artist. Something that happens by chance. Okay? Okay. A motif. Well, it's better if I just show you what a motif is. See those targets that are in each one of these squares of this quilt? That's the motif. And it's repeated over and over again in a fairly structured manner here, structured enough, to create what we call a field of pattern. Okay? Just like at the beginning, and if you looked at the, before you uploaded your PowerPoint or whatever, you saw that uh, patterning of uh, pineapples. The pineapple was the motif created over and over in a structured manner, created the pattern, and it created a field of pattern, a little square of pineapples, okay? This is this is often what patterning is used in, like in art, it's a little more subtle, but it can be used just simply as patterning in like clothing and drapery and things like that. But here, this pattern is used to create this, um, Chuck Close creates a grid for his portraits, and, each one of these little grid squares has a semi-globular sort of circle of color in it. And that is sort of using pattern in art as well. Okay. Close has only done these types of pictures. Huge, up close. This is a 12 by, I don't know, 7 feet or something like that in, in dimension. Up close faces because he suffers from something called prosopagnosia, which means he has no memory at all for faces. None. Not even his own. Not even his wife. Children. He doesn't recognize anybody by face. So he does these. His biography has informed or may, helped him choose the subject matter that he decided to work on for the, almost all of his life. He's still a living. Here's Eric, that portrait up close. You can see those glob globs of circles, globular circles there in each grid square. You're going to want to watch these videos for the discussion if you guys are a part of the class that does the discussion group on randomness. Uh, randomness means chance or out of the artist's control. That often is, comes into play with media. Sometimes you can't always control the media very well, and sometimes it's a lucky happening chance thing that happens with media that creates a great work or a new media or a new art form. And nowhere is it more prevalent than in the work of when you work in performance art. So be looking at these two videos here and tell me what you think was particularly out of the artist's control in these videos. This is an experiment with randomness. In 1920, Hans Arp decided to paint some driftwood, different colors, threw them up in the air, and wherever they landed, that created the, the, what the piece would look like. He just tapped them down there and said, that's it. That's using something totally out of his control, just throwing it in the air to create the, the composition of the piece. So there was no planning at all. It's completely random. I don't mean weird, although it is that too. <laughs>
rhythm. I think it's just best if I just show you what rhythm is. But think of it in this way in your mind. If you feel your eye bouncing through a work, but there isn't a pattern there, you're looking at rhythm. It's subtle. There's a rhythm here. Yes, there's a pattern, a stripe pattern on each one of these double cobalt uh, archways. But the rhythm occurs with the way that they sort of bounce back in the space. That's rhythm. This is rhythm as well. This is an artichoke. You know, those big globule sort of uh, globular sort of artichoke uh, vegetables. You cut it up in half and you, Weston took a very up close picture of this half of, a, of an artichoke. <clears throat> the line edges of those leaves that you see as they open up, even though it's not structured enough to be called a pattern, we can't help but sort of bounce our way as the leaves open up to the edge of the paper, uh, edge of the image. That's rhythm. Okay. That's it.